Barton Turner. Hey, um, you uh, started out before telling me about going to sleep that night and there wasn't a flake of snow. Why don't we just That's pick right. it up from there? You start by telling well, me that again. I think it was New Year's Eve and uh, just a regular night went and wasn't just very, uh, not any snow at all, dry. Went to bed the next morning. I got up and started to go to work. Go out the front door, couldn't get out the front door, couldn't open it. The snow was packed completely to the top of the porch. And so I went out the back door and had to walk to work. And uh, the snow was, oh, knee deep about then, I think. Anyway, I got to work, and nothing, nothing happened. Nobody was down there. There was no, no, no vehicles moving. Um, and what, what did you do for work? Uh, I, I worked for C.A. Sonicker and Sons at that time. They were, they had uh, Drage and, and the Conoco boat plant, and uh, I was uh, running the office. And uh, we had about eight eight men working there, and they finally came straggling in, but we didn't we couldn't even turn a wheel. We didn't, we didn't do anything that day. They, I guess of all of them didn't even show up, but the rest of them were sent home. And uh, I've never never seen it like that. I've never seen the, the snow like that and the wind with it. I had a lot of wind with it. And I uh, finally walked uptown and I remember the, the Golden Rule store was, was uh, oh, it, must have been, it was 30 feet high anyway. And the snow come down off of that was, left the pathway right next to the building of one day snow, but then it drifted clear off into the middle of the street. And uh, there was no, no vehicles, no, no uh, travel at all. And I remember at uh, Peyton and Bowling grocery store, they, uh, people started coming in with sacks, uh, the burlap sacks or any kind of a sack. If they were going to buy groceries, they had to walk in and, and take them to go home. There weren't too many of them. And I can't remember whether it was the next day or a couple of days at least, that in the National Guard got their big trucks out and had uh, four wheel. Uh, four wheel drive, four by fours, and uh, they started trying to clear the streets and making a making a, a path anyway. So uh, they had a little traffic after that. Where'd uh, they pile all the snow? Well, they didn't mostly to start with. They just made a just made a track, and uh, when they they started, uh, then they come with, along with graders later and and pile just moved to the center of the center of the street. Uh, they didn't have any way to, uh, you know, a, a dump truckload of snow didn't go anyplace. <laughs> so uh, they just tried to get it away for, so the traffic could move. It was the main thing they did for the. And then uh, they had to keep clearing the streets. I mean, the snow kept going and, and the blowing, and, and uh, I've, never, I've never seen anything like it. And the wind kept blowing from different directions? Well, yes, it did. I know I. I uh, I took a tank load of gas out to gas and fuel oil out to the Hornbuckle Ranch, which is uh, uh, about uh, 45 miles uh, north on Shine River. And uh, I followed up. Nick Hornbuckle come in and he needed, needed uh, gas, needed feed. So we followed him, and they had a four before ahead of me with a load of hay. Bill Robertson took a load of hay out and I followed them. I didn't have any four-wheel drive in the tank wagon. And it took us uh, most of the day to get out there. And we got there. Uh, I remember he had a sheep shed. He had a, he had sheep. And, and the, on the north side of the sheep shed, the snow was clear at the top of the, clear to top of the roof and sloped down, uh, clear out in the yard. And the uh, next morning that was all gone, that was clear. And the south side of the, either the south or the east side, I can't remember, was, was, sl was so just like, like it was on the other, the north side. I've never seen the wind switch around as often. And, and uh, it was a funny snow, a gr real small, granulated, hard, uh, wasn't any flakes to it, much more like, uh, <laughs> well, it was, uh, kind of like salt. <laughs>
But it got hard. It was hard. You could drive on top of it with a full load, and then all at once you hit a soft spot, and you'd get on, and you'd be stuck. And you had no idea where the soft spots was. You couldn't tell. Uh, and uh, I know uh, coming, uh, we were out there three days. We had three days. We couldn't couldn't get back to town. And uh, the Nice and Moore Company was was clearing one one road at a time, and they'd try to find out what everybody, all the ranchers along that along that road would need, and they'd try to they had a truck follow taking some stuff out to different ranches. And so we had walked over to, to the Reynolds Ranch, which was, uh, Hornbuckles had no phone, so we walked over to the Reynolds Ranch, which was uh, oh, a couple miles away, I guess, or three, and uh, called town to find out when Nisey Moore was going to clear the Ross Road. And they were going to clear it on a Wednesday, so so we uh, we left about 4 o'clock in the morning to get to the, to the Ross Road, which was about eight miles from it, and we didn't know how much digging and one thing or another, we do that. The four wheel went ahead of me, or I went ahead of the four wheel. If I got stuck, he could pull me out. If he got stuck, I couldn't, I couldn't touch him. So, so I, I went ahead of him all the time and, and be going along pretty soon. I'd, I'd fall into one of these soft spots and he'd have to, I could hear, I wouldn't even get out of the cab. I could hear the chain on the axle clink, clink, and, and he'd pull me out and I'd, Go off another direction until I get stuck again, or until I make it. We finally got to Ross Road, and uh, they hadn't been cleared. And so we went down the Ross Road to far. We finally got some big drifts. So we finally turned off and went through the sagebrush, and, and uh, we get. I got stuck several times. He pulled me out, and we kept going. And, and we found out we got to down to about Amspokers. And uh, the cat had broke down, and they hadn't gone any farther. So um, we finally got to town about nine that night, from four o'clock in the morning. And uh, I've ne never, never ever experienced anything like that. And uh, I made several trips with a with a tank wagon. I was, I was supposed to be in the office, but uh, <laughs> it needed somebody to run it. So I was, I made several trips. What the, what we was take gas to Bill, the Bill Wyoming station. It was right on a Jellot Highway, but that was blocked up half the time, and you have to wait for uh, high, the uh, uh, highway department to come out and clear it. And you couldn't be gone long. I remember I took a load of gas out to Bill, and then a load of time I got back, the same place was, was blocked, was full of snow again. So I had to wait till. They cleared it again. It didn't. You didn't. It just blowed in so quick that uh, you can't imagine how how quick it blowed in. Were you often stuck in your truck overnight? Oh yes, yes. I spent uh, several nights in that truck. Uh, I always kept. A, I had a heavy heavy flying suit from from when I was in the Air Force in the service. And I had a heavy flying suit. I I kept in that truck all the time and a box of candy bars. And I uh, always left 50 gallons of gas on that truck. I'd meet somebody that needed gas, or I wouldn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to run out myself. I run the heater part of the time at night, and and uh, <laughs> just a safety factor. I always kept gas on the truck. So, uh, what what was the golden rule? Was it a like a hardware store? Or? No, it was a go. Uh, it was a clothing store. Oh, okay. Was it, it was, like a chain of clothing stores in Wyoming, or no? Just here they they had one in Wheatland, but it was it was uh, owned by the General family okay. in town. And they were right across the street from the Bowling Grocery on Center Street. That was the site of it. But uh, the snow it was a I've never seen the snow uh, like that. You didn't know where it was gonna. But one day the next where it was gonna pile up. So, um, where are we going with this? What about what about uh, uh, the food supplies? I know that the w was was Douglas mostly supplied by train, uh, by truck. Okay, so trucks mostly could, by truck. Tr trucks couldn't no. get in or out. No, it. Uh, I don't know how low the grocery stores uh, how low they got on food, but 
uh, we were never, we didn't feel like we were in any danger at all. And uh, of course the highway department f uh, started clearing the highway and some trucks got through and then they'd be blocked up again. But uh, they finally got it to a transportation. Trains were, trains were snowed in. We didn't have any trains in here for I don't know how many days. And uh, I remember the, they had the crews from the Brass Dairy Place coming up here to help dig the train out, the, the, uh, the Burlington and the Northwestern, Northwestern coming from Lusk. And that got snowed in and a, pa and a, and a cut down between here and Lusk. And, and uh, it was almost top of that train. You couldn't already see, see any part of that train when they started digging it out. They had a snow plow on the front, but of course they, when they got stuck, that didn't do them any good. They finally dug it out, and it, it took it took a while, and they finally got the train service again. But they were digging it out by hand. They were shoveling. it. Shovel by hand. Yeah, they had, that's the only way they had it. Couldn't get any in that cut, and the snow was so deep they start at the top and had to shovel it out. <laughs> Douglas then was pretty much cut off in all directions. Well, we were for we were for a few days. Uh, you couldn't go any place. Uh, nobody could move much, uh, except you had a uh, cat in front of you with a dozer that would clear your path some way. Uh, I remember we out to Hornbuckles. Dick knew the country pretty well, and we were we weren't on the road very often. He'd take off and get on through the through uh, draws that, that, that he knew, and he got stuck a couple times, I'd pull him out, but uh, we were back and forth across the road, getting to his place, and... Uh, you lived in town here then, right? Pardon me? You lived in Douglas, in yes, town. Yes, yes. You I weren't did. on a ranch. No, yeah. no, I lived in Douglas. So, so life got back to normal? Well, it was a while. Uh, I think that thing, that blizzard lasted for over a month, I know, uh, quite a little over a month. It was cold. It was uh, it was below zero, I think, the whole time of the, uh, considerably below zero, all the whole time of the blizzard, day and night. It didn't make any difference. And the wind would blow, and you never never could see the sun. Um, were there a lot of people stranded in Drug Douglas, travelers at hotels and such, do you recall? I think there were, yes, I think so. Uh, if they were... If they were here when it snowed, if they stayed overnight, they were stuck. They didn't. They didn't get any place. They couldn't. Couldn't leave. And I don't know how long it was before the. I wouldn't pay attention to the highways much. I don't know how long it was before they got that those uh, cleared. But I suppose they they get them cleared and they'd block in again. I the way it drifted, it it uh, you couldn't see. It was just you couldn't. It, your your visibility was very limited. Uh, you get out, uh, you, you couldn't see anything. It was the darnest storm I ever saw. <laughs> so you must have been just creeping along in your truck then. Oh yes, yes. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't go very, very fast. And if you ever got off the road, well, you didn't, you'd go pretty good and pretty soon you hit a soft spot. And I never, I never left the road uh, on my own because I couldn't. If I got stuck, I was, I was there. But. I stayed on the highway, and if I, and you wait for the highway department to come along, and and they come along, and, and uh, like I say, it drifted in behind them pretty fast. So it was. Uh, but you didn't have stuff like you had chains. Oh you yes. You had chains, but there were no such thing as snow but, tires back then. Uh, or anything, was there? Oh no, and I didn't have I didn't have four wheel drive. Uh, so you had duels on the back and. A load and you use change, but uh, they helped. But they, they, I could get stuck pretty easy. So you, you were, so you say you pretty much stuck to the roads then, but it was. I had you to. Hit, you hit, but I don't quite understand. So the snow was packed on the roads, and then you hit a, you could hit a soft spot on the. Well, road. it was no, I, I didn't hit the soft spots on the road. Okay. It was when I was traveling, uh, coming back from Hornbuckles that I remember the soft spots. You, you couldn't tell where they were. You couldn't see anything and. Everything looked the same. Sagebrush all covered. Pretty soon you had a spot that, and for a mile, you might go for a mile or two and travel on top of this. It was hard, just like a, 
like concrete. Even with a load, you could go on top of it and hit a soft spot, and down you'd go. <laughs> I have no idea why they were soft or why why uh, uh, you couldn't tell it. So you just uh, kind of shut your eyes and, and try to pick out a place to go. <laughs> did you, when you were uh, traveling cross country like that, did you run across uh, any wildlife in distress? Any deer or animals? Oh, very little, very little. Uh, I think most of them uh, found refuge in, in draws or cut banks or down in a tree. They, they lost some wildlife in it, and they lost some livestock too. But um, it was different. Different ranches lost more than others. Uh, just the way the snow, just the way it packed in. I've seen pictures of. Uh ranch trucks just piled high with sheep or cattle just frozen solid. Yeah. They drifted, they drifted with the wind and they get to the corner of a fence they couldn't go any farther and then they piled up and, and the snow would drift them under and they, the sheep particularly would one get on top of the other and uh, the sheep would be, be stacked up maybe six or seven high you couldn't tell and they were then it's all drifted in and the cattle would drift into the corners too. Uh, they couldn't go any farther because of the fence, and so they were stuck. Wow, wow. Um, anything else? Well, no, I just know it was, uh, it seemed like an awful long time <laughs> that uh, we were snowed in. Were you doing a lot of shoveling? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I'll say. But, uh, it was quite a storm. Worse than anything else you've experienced. I've never, I've never experienced one before or since like that. No, not ever. And then, what do you remember? What the spring thaw was like when it finally came? Well, you know, that wasn't a wet snow. It was just it's a, it's a granulated like it was salt, like I say, and there was uh, wasn't too much moisture on it when it. I think when it, I don't remember it, it, it didn't flood anybody. When it was gone, it just wasn't when that much water in it. Do you remember any? Uh, I've heard talked to some other folks that said static electricity was really a problem. Did you have any problems with static electricity? With static electricity? Yeah. I didn't know. I can't remember. Okay. Okay, yeah. uh, it's possible. I don't remember it. Yeah. And and was uh, radio reception okay? You could hear radio stations okay. As you do recall. You know, I don't remember that either. <coughs> uh, I don't remember about the radio reception. I don't. I was gone most of the time. I, I, I was when I was home. I was sleeping, <laughs> so I don't. I don't really. Uh, I don't really remember the radio reception. So I had no radio in the truck. So it was. Uh, you were basically just really on the go for yeah. that, for that entire yes till probably pretty close to the end of February then. Yes, yeah. it sure was. And do you recall seeing any military planes dropping hay? Yeah, they had hay drops, uh, dropping hay to livestock. Uh, that was quite a quite a sight, and uh, they did quite a little good, I think. Uh, they, of course, a lot of the hay was wasted, but some of it got to the livestock, and and the trouble was, the livestock couldn't hardly get to the hay. <laughs> that was the biggest problem in most of those drops. And were there a lot of military vehicles in and around the Douglas area, do you recall? No, I don't recall. Mostly just the National Guard here uh, with their trucks. They did, a, they did a good job with what they had. And Nines and Moore Company did a, a great job. They, they uh, had their cats out on the roads, that they, uh, clearing roads. And uh, they were very beneficial. To, I don't think it, it made it made life a lot easier for those cats going out. They'd call the ranchers when they were going and ask them what they needed, and they'd had a truck fall from behind, uh, generally an army truck fall behind them with whatever groceries or whatever these ranchers wanted. Or they'd leave it, or the ranchers would be at the road waiting for it, or they'd leave it for them. And uh, each road they took out, each Lapra Road or the Ross Road or Whatever road is going on, they call them before they headed out and tell them about when they'd be there. 
and uh, so it, it was uh, worked pretty good. So you were making a lot of oil deliveries then for for ranches and, and people yes, that needed heating almost oil. Almost like every heat, a lot of them heating oil then. Yes, heating oil, and then a lot of them were out of gasoline. And some of them were getting desperate for heating oil. Well, some were pretty low. Yes, pretty low. But nobody in really any dire no, straits. No, I don't think so. I don't recall anybody in in uh, really dire straits. And do you recall if, if there was any fatalities in the Douglas area from the storm? No, I can't recall any fatalities. I can't. I I I, I don't. Uh, I don't recall any. I know there were some in the state, mm -hmm. but I just yeah. didn't know if they were. You know, I think there were uh, some sheep herders that that uh, were fatalities. They're they're out with their sheep, trying to get their sheep in, and and they got exhausted and, and, and snowed on there and so forth. But I don't remember any uh, any others. Okay. <coughs> good, good. Anything else you can think of? Pardon me? Anything else you can think of? Anything well, else? I'm jog, trying to jog your memory here some more. And no, all I know is that it just seemed like everything was white. You didn't see anything but white. And uh, it drifted and snowed and was the cold at all time, it was just, just it was miserable. Kind of a featureless white, too. I mean, it just oh, kind of yeah. blanketed everything. Yes, it wasn't, uh, everything, was, everything was covered, sagebrush and, and drifts every place. And the downtown buildings were all, were, a lot of the buildings were drifted in. Well, they were drifted, but they, they uh, the only one I recall is the one that came off the Golden Rule. It slanted off from about three feet in the top and slowed up about, about the middle of the street. And were cars buried? Oh yes, yes. There were cars that uh, that were uh, snowed under that didn't move for quite a while. Uh, and for a while they couldn't drive any place anyway. <laughs> and the National Guard finally broke a trail, like I say, and and then the city got out with their equipment, but it kept blowing in behind them. It was it was tough going. Were people, did you ever have any situations where you thought, God, this is getting a little scary. Were people, were people in fear of the, what was going on? Like it was going to get worse and they were going to, you know. Well, uh, I'm sure people wonder how long it was going to last, when it, when it was going to be over. They really couldn't do much. Uh, these ranchers couldn't do very much. They couldn't get out in it and, and do any feeding. Like I say, they dropped hay to them. And, uh, they mostly have to wait till it was over before they could before they could do very much. But you were no, you were never scared on the road or anything. You always well, not really. I had I had I was going to keep warm. I knew I had a even if I didn't have any heater. I had, had a heavy flying suit. And uh, if I got stuck, I just stopped till someone come along. <laughs> it seems to me that people were really prepared back then, especially you know people that. People like you that had to be on the road and, and ranchers especially were prepared for this kind uh, well, of weather. Ranchers were always prepared for winter. They were uh, most of them had a pretty good stock of groceries and and stuff. But if it lasted so, as long as it did, why they started running out of, of stuff like fuel oil and and uh, they run out of gasoline. They'd run their trucks and uh, try or pickups enough that they that they run out. They couldn't go very far. They get stuck and dig themselves out and. But they run their trucks a lot, but uh, most of them were low on. The most of them that needed gas were low on fuel before the storm hit, because they, they generally kept a pretty good supply. Right, right. And I I don't know. Maybe the people that lived in towns weren't as well prepared as the ranchers, but then they did have grocery stores. No, but they could uh, they walk to grocery store, and I don't I don't think everybody in town was really. Uh, did without well, they did without some things, but they had the necessities, I think. Good. It was quite a storm, and I hope we never see another one. Me too. <laughs>